And we're back here on Talking Points because a lot went on in 2019, but now we're looking ahead to 2020. You've actually filed for re-election for District 19. So tell us a little bit about that, what you're looking forward to. Well, I'm looking forward to getting past this uh, impeachment nonsense and doing the people's business. I think um, there were opportunities in the last year in the Nancy Pelosi-led house to bring prescription drug pricing down for seniors, uh, but she wasn't willing to work in a bipartisan way. That's the only way we get legislation uh, through the Senate and to the president. She understands that, but um, we were distracted by things that, again, were not productive. We, we now can do a whole lot more trade deals uh, using USMCA as a template. So from a positive uh, perspective, uh, we should be able to expedite more free trade deals, comprehensive trade deals with Japan, others in the uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, Britain is going to be leaving the European Union. There's an opportunity to uh, trade and deliver some of our great U.S. products over there. So um, I think that's going to be a big focus for me. Uh, we've got a farm bill. We've got uh, lower taxes and regulations. We've got an economy that's booming, but we've got to open up new markets and access new customers. And I'm on the Ways and Means Committee, which is the Committee of Jurisdiction that sets trade policy. So moving from ag farm bills, uh, moving to uh, through tax reform, uh, I think trade is really the place where we can achieve real prosperity for the future, not just in West Texas, but around the country. You mentioned the Ways and Means. Anything else that you all started this year that you'd like to f finish or continue with the voters' allowance? Yeah, well, I've been named by my peers on Ways and Means as uh, the chairman of the task force for rural health care. There's a crisis in rural health care. There's a lot of stress on these community hospitals. Um, uh, they don't have the, the number of patients to meet the fixed cost, the payer mix is bad, we've got to reduce regulations, we've got to leverage technology, we've got to have a different payment system altogether. We can't have a one-size-fits-all because it just doesn't work in a small town USA, which by the way is where the next generation of ag and energy producers are. So it's critical we solve that problem. I'm going to be at the tip of the spear because I was named chairman and I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to working with my Democratic colleagues to come up with some bipartisan solutions that uh, will make living in rural America, you know, a, um, a better proposition. Very important for our district here. Absolutely. Anything else you'd like to say to voters? Uh, obviously an optimistic future looking to 2020, but anything else you'd like them to know as they head into the new year? Well, I, I just want to say it's been a great honor to represent you and your families in our nation's capital. Um, I grew up in West Texas, and I think what our nation needs as much as anything are the West Texas values that we believe so deeply in. And um, I'm honored to be uh, fighting the good fight for a safer, stronger, uh, and more prosperous uh, and freer future in the United States for my children and for your viewers, children and grandchildren. So I've got a lot of fight in me. I'm ready for 2020 and uh, hopefully again we can be productive as a nation, as a Congress, uh, to advance the ball for the American people. And I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. So hope ahead, some big votes behind you. Thank you so much for being here, spending time with us. Be I'm back. sure we're going to be catching up with you as soon as the new year rings in. Thank you, Avery. Good to be with you. Well, now let's get a look at last week's poll question. We asked you last week, would you support limiting the oldest age someone can be to serve as president? 61% of you said yes.